This video will review the basic integrals of some common functions that we encounter. Okay, so from the previous video, we defined that we had some function f of x. This is equal to the derivative of another function of big F of x. So big F of x in the indefinite case is equal to the integral of f of x. And we're ignoring the constant of integration here. We're just setting that equal to zero. And then the definite integral from a to b of f of x would be uh, big F of b minus big F of a. Okay, so let's look at some rules for some uh, indefinite integrals here. All right, so let's say we had f of x equals x squared. So what we need to do is find a function whose derivative is equal to x squared. So we say, okay, well, the polynomial rules for the derivatives, each of those decrease the order of polynomials by one each time. So maybe if we increase the order of this by one, we'll find a derivative that matches. Okay, so if we take the derivative of x cubed, we get three times x squared by the polynomial rule. All right, well, that's okay, but that's, that's too big by a factor of three. So we know that, uh, for constants, constants just change uh, the derivative by a constant. So we'll add in a constant of one third here for our x cubed. And if we take the derivative of one third x cubed, now we get x squared. So this means that the integral of x squared is equal to one third x cubed. Once again, this is plus a constant, but we're ignoring the constant of integration, just setting that equal to zero. Okay, so this means that the definite integral, if I wanted the integral from 1 to 2 of x squared with respect to x, this will be equal to 1 third x cubed evaluated at over the region 1 to 2. So that's 1 third 2 cubed f of b minus 1 third 1 cubed f of a. That gives us 1 third times 8 minus 1 or 7 thirds is the area under the curve of x squared from 1 to 2. Okay, so that's like, like working with derivatives, that's fine to do for a single function or for something very simple if you know uh, how to work with that. But in general, it's going to be fairly difficult to come up with functions uh, that are going to be the functions that your function is going to be a derivative of. So it'd be helpful if we had some nice rules to go to when we're trying to do various integrals. Okay, so those are over here, just as they were for our same kinds of functions in the case of derivatives. So for a constant, the integral of a constant a, where a is some real number between negative infinity to infinity, the integral of a dx is equal to a times x. So if we have if we have just some constant, that's the constant times the variable of integration. All right, a polynomial. This is the inverse of the polynomial rule for derivatives. So the integral of x to the n is 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1, where n here is some integer, and it's not equal to negative 1. So we saw that in this type of thing here. So we have x squared, n is 2, 1 over n plus 1 is 3, 1 third, x to the n plus 1, x cubed. All right, uh, the simplest integral you can possibly do, exponentials. Exponentials are their own derivatives. They are also their own integrals. So the integral of e to the x is equal to e to the x. All right, there's a special case for polynomials where you have 1 over x. So just as the derivative of natural log was 1 over x, so too is the integral of 1 over x is going to be the natural log of x. So that's one special case to keep in mind, which is an exception to our polynomial rule. And lastly, we have trigonometric functions where the derivative of sine was cosine, and the derivative of cosine was negative sine. So we have the integral of cosine is going to be sine, and the integral of sine is going to be negative cosine.